let's talk Taz. Hey everyone, I hope you are having a wonderful week and today we are going to talk about a favorite podcast of mine and a favorite family of mine, if that's a thing I can say, and that would be the McElroys. So, uh, when I first got into Dungeons and Dragons, after I'd started playing for a while, I became aware that people listen to podcasts on D&D. Some of the podcasts discuss D&D, I think, but a lot of them are just recordings of people playing it. So naturally I was intrigued because I am nosy and I like hearing about people's D&D characters and their campaigns. Side note, if you would like to tell me about them, please comment down below. I love hearing about your character. I want to know their motivations. I want to know their deepest, darkest secrets, and I want to know what their world is like. So if you want to do that, just let me know. Anyway. Once I heard about this idea, I was intrigued and I immediately started watching Critical Role, which is probably the most famous podcast. Wait, that's actually not true. Uh, once I heard about this, I did start watching Critical Role, but I had found a couple before just because of people followed online and those were Dark and Dicey and then Girls Guts Glory. So Dark and Dicey, Girls Guts Glory and Critical Role are all similar in that they are all done by voice actors which means they have some pretty great character voices and also that each episode is around three to four hours long. I have a bit of a problem focusing on things if I can't see them or even if I can see them but not a lot is happening so in a D&D game it's really just people sat at a table so the three to four hour long thing was very hard for me. I would put it on when I was doing chores and things like that but my chore sessions don't last three to four hours and so it would take me days to finish an episode, which was fine, but it was a lot to handle. And then I heard about the Adventure Zone. And initially I was skeptical. It was, I was told it was three brothers and their dad playing D&D, which, okay, I guess. Um, it sounded, you know, not super diverse and I wasn't really sure how I would like it. I also knew that it didn't have any sort of video component and I really wasn't a podcast listener, but I gave it a shot and I am so, so glad that I did. I don't know a ton about this family, so forgive me if there's any wrong information, but from what I understand, the father, Clint McElroy, was a radio, uh, what's the word, radio jockey, radio announcer, things like that. And his three sons are called Griffin, Justin, and Travis McElroy, not in age order, because I messed that up. Um, and they run a bunch of podcasts with their significant others and with each other. There's one on Serial, there's one on weird medical cases, I don't remember any others because I don't actually listen to any of them, but I know they're a thing. And they also kind of work with video games and things like that. But I was only interested in the D&D aspect, and so that's what I knew them through. So the their podcast for D&D is called The Adventure Zone, or T-A-Z, Taz. Um, and it's pretty well known, I would say, and it's pretty famous for, ironically enough, its cast of diverse characters. Uh, which isn't something that I expected, but was pleasantly surprised to find out. There are several campaigns. There are uh, several campaigns, so each one has its own name and plentiful episodes, as well as one shots, which are just kind of one episode stories. So you have Taz Balance, which is the first campaign they did, and that was in the traditional Dungeons and Dragons medieval sort of universe with the D&D gaming system. Then they did Taz Amnesty, which was set up in rural West Virginia as the setting modern day with the TTRPG system. I believe it's called Monster of the Week, which I have never played. It's pretty similar to D&D, but there are some differences in mechanics and things like that, which they explain if you uh, listen to the podcast. There are several one shots uh, between these two campaigns, as well as between Amnesty and the next a uh, few campaigns which I can't remember the names of and they were quite short as well so it's kind of between a one shot and a campaign I would say I didn't actually listen to them uh, because then we move on to the most recent campaign which is Taz Graduation which is again uh, in the D&D traditional setting and traditional mechanics uh, but this time it is run by a different brother so all of the previous campaigns uh, excluding the one shots were DM'd by Griffin McElroy uh, but the most recent one is run by Travis McElroy. So a little summary of each campaign, they don't have to be listened to in any particular order because they each have their own story. So as long as you start with one campaign or one one shot from the beginning, you're fine. Uh, Taz Balance focuses on three adventurers named Taco, Magnus, and Merle as they explore the D&D world. This campaign is quite funny because the McElroys had never, as far as I know, played Dungeons and Dragons before. So they're kind of 
figuring out the game as they go along. So um, you might not like it if you're super into rules because they do flub some things. But honestly, if you're a newbie, you get to kind of learn along with them. And it's a really interesting campaign. So Taco is called Taco Taco uh, and he is an elven wizard. Uh, a nice thing about the characters is they don't really describe them too much, so people are really able to put their own interpretation on them in fan art, which I really like. So you see the characters being depicted as different races with different hair color, uh, skin color, things like that, which is very inclusive, although as I will mention in a minute, they do get into very inclusive characters as we go on. Uh, then we have Magnus Burnside, he is a fighter, he's a human, and Merle High Church, who is a dwarven cleric for Pan. Um, I believe they called him Weed Grandpa sometimes. The voices these boys do are great and the story is just fantastic. That's something that's really fun about D&D podcasts or broadcasts or anything about D&D really, is that this is a completely unscripted thing. The DM has some idea of what's going on, but the players don't. And so the fact that you can make a cohesive story out of all this is insane, but you can and they do and it's just amazing. Like, I loved Valance so much that I seriously debated getting a Valance tattoo and I still might. Um, let me just say the words Abraka fuck you came very close to being tattooed on one of my shoulders with an umbrella and that's still up in the air. Now the second campaign, uh, Taz Amnesty, as I said, is located in rural West Virginia, which is where the McElroys are from. And it is set in a little town called Kepler. Uh, and it basically is about monsters. So monster of the week is basically what the name implies in that there are different monsters that characters will be fighting. Um, but beyond that, there is an overarching story that Griffin makes, which makes it more interesting. I was a little bit hesitant at first because I thought having like specified monsters for each few sessions would be a little bit boring and a little bit too formulaic, but it actually was very interesting. So our player characters here are Aubrey, no, Audrey. I should know this, but I don't. One of them, Th those names sound really similar, okay. AKA the Lady Flame, a bisexual magician <laughs> with her sidekick, a bunny named Dr. Harris Bonkers, PhD, God help you if you forget his title. Uh, then we have Duck Newton, who is our favorite forest ranger in Kepler, West Virginia, who's just trying to protect those forests. And Edward Ned Chicane, a the owner of the Kutanomica, which is a sort of museum store thing for all things paranormal. And so these characters end up being drawn together and they have to protect Kepler from monsters, which is pretty much as fun as it sounds. And then we come to our current campaign, which is Taz Graduation. And Taz Graduation has a special place in my heart, mainly because in the first episode, they introduced a non-player character named Rainier, who is a chronically ill magical wheelchair using character like me, except her wheelchair is a floating throne and she's also a necromancer who makes dead squirrels dance. But besides that, she's basically like me. And I cried when I heard that because I have never, ever, ever outside of my own work seen anyone make characters that so closely represented me. Besides Rainier, we also have a trans woman. We have non-binary characters, gay characters, straight characters, bi characters, anything you can think of, they're probably in there. And that's so great because I think it's very tempting to only play a character that you know or to only insert characters of things that you know, but that can leave out so much. And this way people can just relate so much to these characters. It's just amazing. Anyway, Taz graduation takes place in a sort of college setting or medieval college setting at uh, Hieronymus Wiggenstaff School for Heroes and Villains, or actually the Annex, um, which is the school for sidekicks and hench people, which is where our three player characters are going on their first day of school. So we have Argonaut Keen, a water Ganassi rogue, uh, Sir Fitzroy Maplecourt, a half elven something, I don't want to spoil it. And then we have Redacted, as he's currently known online, the Fearbulg Druid. 
And so they get up to all sorts of hijinks. It's a very interesting combination of the typical adventuring D&D feel, but also a collegiate feel, which I really like. And of course, one of the beloved NPCs is Gary the Gargoyle, who sort of acts as like a guide, but also a hive mind, but also a protector. It's, it's very interesting. Each episode is roughly an hour to an hour and 20 minutes, which makes them very easy to digest. And they also only come out once every two weeks. So you have plenty of time to listen to the episode at your leisure if you can't concentrate as well um, and still get through it before the next episode comes out. They are engaging, they are entertaining, and a lot of people love to cosplay them. Which is where I'm going to insert a little bit of self-promo. As you can see here, I cosplayed a character from Taz Balance. I don't want to give anything away by saying her name. So I'm just going to put the picture here. If you want to see my videos of her on TikTok, you can. I do use audios from the podcast though, so those will be kind of spoilery. Um, watch at your own risk, but I do love this character very much. And just, just listen to the podcast. It's great. They have TikTok accounts devoted to getting the audios from the podcast so you can cosplay them and, you know, say the lines in character. It's just a great way to take yourself away to a fantastical world, which really we all kind of need right now. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Check out my links in the description if you want to follow me on other social media websites. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next Sunday. Bye.